Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we are doing what's going on with you and your romantic interest. Now this romantic interest could really be anybody. It could be your current spouse, it could be your current lover, it could be a crush, it could be an ex. Take it how you want to use this reading. I did take your, your guys' feedback when I asked you in the community post what kind of readings would you like. You explained to me that you want more readings when it comes to the romantic readings um, that have to do with connections that are already going on because I was mainly focused for the singles and what's coming up for them and taking a look at a wider scope with your feedback. I realized that it was important to do a reading with... Um, someone who who you already have a current relationship with so yeah this could be your spouse lover crush ex or whoever you want it to be so to do this reading we are going to be picking three piles together so we have one two and three let's see what they are for pile number one you have love spell. For pile number two, you have nature. And for pile number three, you have unconditional love. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add these for you right now. There you go. So for pile number one, you have the cherry quartz. For pile number two, you have the green grass jasper. And for pile number three, you have the citrine. All right, so I'm going to now be adding zodiac signs. If you do not wish to Pick your piles using zodiac signs, then please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And then once you're ready, please head down to the description box where you'll find your timestamps. As always, click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. But if you do like to pick with zodiac signs, if this is your preferred method and it's something that you enjoy doing, I do have that option for you as well. So these are the 12 zodiac signs and we'll be assigning four zodiac signs per pile. This way you can choose your zodiac sign. You can do it by sun, moon or rising as you prefer. I personally am using the Western uh, astrology, but you can use the Vedic if this is your preferred method. So this is all just to make it very easy for you to pick to sometimes, you know, you just want to be sure that this is your pile. And so this is another layer you, that you can absolutely use for this reading. Okay, so let's pick the four piles for pile number one. Sorry, the four um, signs. So you've got Aquarius. You've got Scorpio. You have Capricorn. And you have Sagittarius. For pile number two, you've got Libra. You have Pisces. You've got Aries. And Gemini. So these are the signs for pile number two. For pile number three, we've got Cancer. Wait, sorry, pile number three. <laughs> and we've got Virgo. We have Taurus. And of course, last but not least, we have Leo. 
So these are all the different ways you can pick your pile. And once you're ready, my dear soul family, please head down to the description box as described, click on your times, and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful uh, cherry quartz as well as the love spell card. Let's see what this is all about. Today we're taking a look at what's going on with you and your romantic interest. So to do this reading, these are the four oracle, uh, sorry, the three oracle cards that we are, decks rather, that we are using. And if you've picked your piles from the very beginning using your zodiac signs, then you are an Aquarius, Scorpio, Capricorn, or Sagittarius. So welcome to your reading. I just realized before we begin, I want to light your candle. There we go. And it's interesting. I think this is really symbolic to your reading because you do have um, a flame that's lit on both sides. Let's see what this is all about. We'll check your Oracle cards first. So you have intention with the Archer. You have, how can we maximize the space? If we do this, we can put your chakra card right there. So you have with the crown chakra creation. It's really interesting how you have intention and creation. Let's see what this is saying here. You have helmet, guardness, guardedness, isolation, self-protection. Wow, this reading is all over the place. <laughs> so curious. You have not stability, security, and resilience. Okay. Let's now check your tarot cards. I think with a full picture, things will come to be more clear in your reading. Mm -hmm. And I feel this one as well. So let's see what you've got. If we need any more, we can always pull some more. So you have the King of Pentacles, mm. the Moon card, the Four of Swords, the Six of Cups. Mm. Looks like this is an old soul connection here between the two of you, right. You have the full card, uh -huh. okay, the Knight of Wands, mm. the Wheel of Fortune, and finally, the Six of Pentacles. Wow, so much is going on here. I see right off the bat a lot of guardedness with the helmet. You even have <clears throat> with the Knight of Wands, which is supposed to be the fastest knight in the deck, in full armor. I see a lot of guardedness going on in this connection. So there is this opposite energies of strong attraction. There is unquestionably an unquestionable flame between the two of you, like strong uh, attraction or strong emotions. It depends on where you are in this connection. So this could be like your spouse or uh, your crush, it could be your ex, it could be your current lover, 
but I do see things are tangled a little bit energetically between the two of you. Not sure why. Um, and there's this dichotomy in energy in your reading between having a strong att attraction between the two of you and being absolutely guarded. Mm. It looks like things are a bit complicated between the two of you with the knot here. Things are a bit, I, I heard the word messy in my mind, messy, complicated. And this is perhaps why you have the intention and the crown chakra with creation. This connection will settle down with a lot of intention and thought being put into it. Because it seems here like emotions at the moment that you're watching this reading are all over the place. There is obviously with the Knight of Wands a lot of attraction between the two of you. But at the same time, it looks like the connection is in a phase of some sort of rest and does require a lot of help for it to clear the energy and to flow naturally. Because once it flows naturally, you'll see a lot of attraction and a new beginning between the two of you. The wonderful thing about this connection is that there is a recognition of souls and the, the connection feels rather homey, I would say, safe. Uh, it feels like your souls feel safe towards each other. But um, despite all of that, there is uh, a lot of guardedness because here, it looks like on the outside, you or both of you are acting like the energy of the King of Pentacles, like you're trying to be maybe mature. Both of you have this child at heart uh, soul. And, but at the same time, both of you are acting very mature, acting very guarded, acting perhaps very careful, acting very grounded, when really <laughs> within, you are much more simpler than that and much more fun and outgoing than how you are displaying yourself uh, on the outside. So on the outside, you're more like guarded, mature, but really in your hearts, you're both of you are, uh, you would see, you would say children at heart, like honest, uh, um, no, honest is not the word I'm looking for um childlike at heart there is purity to your soul but make no mistake this connection requires a lot of help and the help is from within both of you there needs to be a lot of focus and good intention or strong intention on making the connection I, I, I don't I'm, I won't say more clear but more adjusted mm. because at the moment there's a lot of vagueness between the both of you there's a lot of unknown there's a lot of vagueness and a lot of rest meaning inaction happening and the Knight of Wands, these don't look really happy. And although there is a strong connection, it's not manifesting properly because some, some knot is standing in your way. How about we explore? So the Knight of Wands shows that there, the emotions are there, the attraction is there, but maybe you're not so happy with each other at the moment. And so there's a lot of guardedness. Let's find out what this knot is. Very interesting story. So what is this knot that you have with the person you are inquiring about today? Because it looks so good. I mean, I, when I looked at the love spell, I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a pile full of love. <laughs> and it is, don't get me wrong. It really is. But due to some difficulties, which we'll find out about in a moment, 
there is a lot of guardedness and there's a lot of unknown and a little bit of dissatisfaction that is not wearing off the attraction in any way, shape or form, but it's manifesting as more guardedness and more like matter of factness rather than letting emotions flow naturally and, and letting yourselves out naturally. And so, like I mentioned, it is in a phase of rest now, but do expect a surprise happening here, by the way. With the Four of Swords in conjunction to this Wheel of Fortune, it looks like this one is sitting in the field and they finally got a crown. It's like out of nowhere, they're surprised with something big. So do expect that some adjustments will definitely happen in this connection. But until then, let's explore what this knot is and what is your guidance in terms of your intention and creation here? Because I think this is more mental and it could even be work that you might want to do on your own and not really towards the connection as much as, and I'm getting this idea the more I look at these two cards. So first things first, what is this not in this connection, this beautiful connection? Justice card. Seven of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups tells me that both of you are emotional by nature. And because of your emotional nature, perhaps you take a little bit of time with the Seven of Pentacles to build trust, to feel safe, um, to ease yourself into a healthier connection. So whether this is your spouse or just a crush from this to that, it is taking time for the both of you to get to trust each other and to get to know each other more. The most thing in your favor at the moment is that the souls kind of understand each other and justice here shows that there isn't like a particular issue going in this connection i think this is uh with the justice is that this relationship or connection it's taking its natural course to find its balance so things may look like it's knotted at the moment, but there isn't really a serious issue at all going on in this connection. It's such an interesting story because you look at your cards and you're like, whoa, something big must be going on. But actually, no, pile number one, there isn't something big going on. And I think due to your emotional natures and due to the nature of the strong attraction perhaps going on, maybe there are like emotions all over the place. And it's just... Uh, taking its time for this energy to adjust and balance by time with the Seven of Pentacles. Uh, I think by time you'll get to understand more about each other, get to trust each other more. So let it take its natural course is the best thing I can tell you about this connection that you're inquiring about. Now here you have pretty important guidance with the intention and creation. With the crown chakra, it is focusing on, you know, crown chakra has to do with connecting with spirituality. So focus on that soul connection that you have. Focus on that soul connection that you have. Let's read what this crown chakra has. There's a story behind, behind every card. So let's see what the story is. There we go, creation. It says, In a time before history, she shaman walks the earth, bestowing artistic talents on a selected few. One day she rests under a birch tree. Interesting, she bestows artistic talents on a selected few. So one day she rests under a birch tree. Hey, says Birch, I want my muse too. 
Birch entertains she shaman for a long time, singing and telling tales. She shaman smiles. Interesting. My great friend, you have had your art all along. She vows that from then on, she will give everyone their own gift. Mm. To this day, she shaman has never left us. We see her inside every creative work. So this tells me something very interesting. I think this energy here is going to dissipate. The more I see mind here, do you see? With the archer, the, inten the intention and the crown chakra, I see build a, like remember your soul connection with the mind. Um, Use your creative mind to connect with each other. This could be like doing creative activities with each other. It could be uh, spending time connected with the mind with each other, talking more, rationalizing things more. I think the more your minds are in tune with each other, the more you're back to the soulful connection. And I believe that this is the guidance here that will really dissipate this unexplainable tangled energy that's going on at the moment. And, and it's really not unexplainable because it's sort of forming out of emotion rather out of anything rational, honestly. And in order to get back to your true essence and true nature and build a strong connection in this uh, relationship that you are inquiring about today, it will be solved through the mind. Take the time to get to know each other better, to speak your minds out. Sometimes you're like, but I know my spouse. We've been together for years. Sometimes it's, sometimes you think you know someone, but the deeper you connect to them, the more you find out about them. And I think at this stage of you listening to this reading, uh, it is very useful that the two of you, instead of being restful in this connection, to put in the time and effort to speak, to connect in the mind. Do you see that? Because this is obviously what's going to eliminate this unknown with the moon card that is the root cause of this entanglement along with their emotions, of course, in this connection. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see uh, what is going on between you and the romantic interest that you are inquiring about today. I truly wish you all the best of luck with this person. It does seem like a beautiful connection waiting to happen or waiting to form properly. Once it's at that stage, nothing can stand in your way <laughs> between your emotions. This was your reading, my dear pile number one. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pal number one, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful green grass Jasper as well as this beautiful card nature. But there was also another form of picking your pile in the introduction and if you chose to pick your pile through your zodiac sign which was another option then the signs for this pile are libra aries gemini and pisces so welcome to your reading these are the oracle decks that we will be using today so let's get right into it and see what you've got so you have purpose with fulfillment okay you have the heart chakra with perception very interesting actually what if i push this up a little bit ah then we can fit the heart chakra card all right you also have book knowledge history education okay Let's pull out your tarot cards. And there we go. See what's going on with you and 
the romantic interest that you are inquiring about. As I mentioned in the introduction, this could be a spouse, a lover, a crush, an ex, whoever you are inquiring about today. These are a lot of cards. <laughs> so let's see what you have. Right, so you have the Justice card right off the bat. You have, and it's interesting, the Justice and the books, the book. Mm. Um, you have, whoa, the Six of Wands. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> this looks like this is someone you're going to end up marrying, or maybe this is your spouse. You have the Ace of Cups. I mean, the Four of Wands, which is, by the way, also a card when it comes to love of a wedding. So look at that. Uh, double the message here. This is definitely someone who you one day is going are going to have a very committed connection with. You have the Tower. You have the Hierophant. Again, a card of commitment. This combo right there is definitely like registering your relationship. The, the Hierophant card is also a card of marriage. It's a card of commitment. I mean, this is uncanny at this point. You have the Magician. Magic. Oh my God, I'm loving this pile. You have the Five of Pentacles. And you have the Ten of Pentacles. This is, look, this is going to be someone who you're going to, feel very happy with. But mind you, it might start off uh, a bit on a rocky patch. I think you might in the beginning of this connection feel like um, nothing is going on between the two of you. Maybe the, it's going to start off with a little bit of difficulty. It's not going to begin in a way that you would prefer to begin, but everything else about this connection just melts the heart. In fact, with purpose, it does show me that this is, in fact, your soulmate. This is the person you are meant to be with. And you have the heart chakra, which shows that this is going to be a connection full of love and romance and true connection. But in the beginning, we can see here that it may not start off on the right foot. I don't know where you are in this connection at the moment, but I can tell you that this connection is going to go from nothing at all to a spark uh, magically igniting between the two of you. Like a spark happens and all the magic and love just starts happening. It's as if you had a lamp, a really sophisticated, nice lamp, and it's not working the more you click on it. Once you plug it in, <laughs> so something is going to happen along the way. I bet these cards are explaining what's going to happen in between this mysterious phase of going from nothing to a spark, activating and magic, love, and attraction just happens between the two of you. It's absolutely, I, I want to say crazy in a beautiful way. Because here with the Ten of Pentacles, it looks like the connection between the two of you is going to have everything that you want and more. In fact, the card that you were drawn to shows us the Amazon life full of its abundant life forms, luscious life forms. So we see abundant life, luscious life, adventure, a beautiful farm uh, life that is filled with uh, so much richness and different aspects to it. So yeah, this is like the heart chakra being activated. This is falling madly in love with each other and having a rich, beautiful life together. It's crazy how this is all happening from nothing, <laughs> right? You would think a love like that probably formed at love from first sight, but it didn't in this case. It's not love at first sight, but once that activation happens, nothing can stand in the way between uh, the love and this connection. So I'm so curious about this connection <laughs> going from 
nothing happening to things activating this way. Very curious. Let's see what this is all about. How did it go? Oh my God, from nothing to everything, just like that. What's happening in between here? Five of Cups. Hermit. Wow, the lovers. I know that's the story, <laughs> but what happened though? Oh, looks like someone's there. Oh, so perhaps it's going from nothing because there might be a third party involved. Third party could, you know, be many energies. Of course, the most obvious one of them is maybe the spark didn't initially happen because one or both of you could already be in a, a relationship. And, and when the hermit appears, like when you're not in this connection, perhaps it is when you will be able to look at this connection. Mm. So the obvious form is uh, someone else. It could be one or both of you are already in a relationship. It could be... Oh, it could be one party not wanting to disappoint another party. Sometimes people with different cultures, different religions, is my guess, uh, don't want to disappoint people like their parents or their community. This could also be, um, what else? Simply their attention wasn't there. Maybe they were, they or you or both of you were focused on like your work. Uh, you, uh, you had other things to look at. And so it didn't really make you focus the lens necessarily on each other. But for a lot of you, this is like there is another person involved, as you can see in the lover's card. And once you are on your own or they are on your own or both of you or yeah, we'll let the other example go for now. Um, only then you'll be able to notice each other or that when that reason dissipates a little bit or you have time on your own or you notice each other, uh, something happens away from the things that usually are capturing your attention, will you actually notice each other? Like maybe even feel something. And also, the weird part of your story a little bit is it seems like you're going to connect during a time of grief. Either you're grieving or they are grieving. So interest, interest, interesting story in the beginning here. Perhaps why you have the five of pentacles. It's like you're really not into each other in the beginning because um, there's nothing, there's inactivity going on in the beginning due to something that is in one or both of your lives and only when you or them or both are separated from this thing and even grief it will a spark happen between the two of you mm. the magician here is looking into their eyeglasses and into a magnifying glass giving me the idea that in this time, you'll be able to shift your focus onto each other, you or them or both of you. You'll be truly able to focus and notice the other things that you haven't noticed about each other before. And it's turning into a spark of magical love. Like, despite how your, sto your story is starting, which I realize may not be something that you like to hear, but the spark that's going to happen when this thing begins between the two of you is going to be so powerful, like really no other 
love. And with purpose here, it's like you're, you two are the real uh, soulmates or um, soul love. And because of that, once your souls realize that, a spark that is undeniable is going to begin, one that cannot be broken once it's plugged in. And it's going to take being committed to the next level. The amount of cards speaking about you two having a connection is crazy. It's blowing my mind. <laughs> I haven't seen anything like this before. So it's going to be a rich, beautiful, fiery connection between the two of you, full of life, full of love, full of like each one of you knowing that they found the true person in life. It's like no one else will do uh, after this connection in this way. And that's the realization and the knowing as you are in this connection. And Ten of Pentacles, of course, shows that this is going to be a lifetime of happiness and richness. Uh, it's a person who you're going to form a family with. Um, yeah, someone who's there to stay. So that's the whole story here from past, present, and future that's going on in your connection. Like I said, I'm not sure at which stage you are within this connection. But what I will do is, since I don't know at which stage you are, and different people listening to this pile will be at different stages, I want to pull out some cards as your guidance on what to do within this connection. Regardless of where you are, this is what you need to hear right now about this connection. It's truly a soulful one, one that is meant to happen, meant to be, as the expression says. So let's see what your guidance is. The Fool. Go with the flow. Four of Pentacles. The High Priestess. Wow. The Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah. I wasn't supposed to take from these cards, but it looks like the lover's card came up again. Okay, so these are the old ones. We want to put them away so we don't get confused. It looks like it's meant to come here. So what is your guidance? Hmm. Four of Pentacles is hold up. Don't rush it. Because with the High Priestess, things are meant to unravel in the way it is meant to unravel. So just let it be, my dear pile number two. Let this connection be. And did you see how the dog is holding the fool? Like, let the connection flow, but don't jump into it. Like, don't do anything unnatural about it. Like more of the advice of hold your horses, although you sometimes perhaps wish you would like to start right away, don't do that. Uh, let it flow naturally. In fact, hold off until things uh, appear clearer for you. You will know every step of the way. The universe will be showing you everything in due time and every step of this connection. So... Do know that this is a highly spiritual connection, a sacred one, in fact. So let it unravel in the way it's supposed to unravel. And do know that you're going to be very fortunate in love once uh, it is time for it to happen. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your cards in regard to what's going on between you and uh, your romantic interest that you're inquiring about today. I truly hope you've enjoyed your reading. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day. It would be lovely to have you as part of the community. And my dear pile number two, thank you so, so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! 
Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful citrine as well as the unconditional love card. Very intrigued about your reading. Let's find out more about it. But if you have picked through your zodiac signs at the intro of your video, then for you, uh, the zodiacs here are Virgo, Cancer, Leo, and Taurus. Welcome, welcome to your reading. Let's get more information about what's going on with you and uh, with a romantic interest that you're inquiring about today. This could be anyone. Uh, it could be your current spouse. It could be a lover. It could be a crush or it could even be an ex. So use the reading the way uh, you want to use it. Before we get into your tarot cards, which I see a lot of cards pop up, we can like always... Uh, shuffle again. Let's first take a look at your oracle cards. So you have perfume, vanity, deception, performativity. Hmm. Oi. There we go. So to be honest with you, I feel like with perfume here, this is like infatuation at first sight. This is someone looking at someone, noticing someone and getting infatuated, especially with how they look like right away. Okay. You have trust and it says the fall. Whoa. This is, this looks like somebody falling madly in love with someone at first sight, looking at them. Wow. What a story here. Okay, I think I'll move this a little bit up so we have space for your two cards. Wow, wow. Okay, so this is someone who saw you, fell in love with you at first sight, who is mesmerized by how you look uh, and everything about um, everything that you can notice in a person before you get to know them on a deeper level. So that could be your style, it could be the way you move, it could be... Uh, the way you talk, it could be the initial ideas and the initial information that they know about uh, about you from the very beginning. It could be uh, how you look, it could be everything like that. And you have with the heart chakra, trickery. Mm. Let's find out what this is. I do know the story of this card. Um, one trying to trick the other to get more uh, acorns and then they lose their acorns as uh, as a consequence. So we'll see why this heart chakra card is in your reading mm. as we take a look at your tarot cards. So what's going on with you and your romantic interest? What's going on with you and your romantic interest? Okay. So you have the Knight of Swords. This is like energy moving quickly. This is someone developing emotions quickly. The Two of Pentacles. Temperance. Ah, but then there's a lot of doubt here. Perhaps this is why there's the card trickery. We'll find out. You have the Ace of Pentacles. The Two of Wands. Talk about doubt. Whoa. There's doubt going on here. Not sure why yet, but we'll find out. You have the Seven of Cups again starting to we're we're starting okay so although there is this initial attraction and falling and woo, <laughs> like heart chakra opening up and going wow uh you do have a lot of cards that have similar messages which is doubting not being sure wishy-washy hmm Let's put the doubting cards up top like that. Yeah. 
rest of the cards in place. See, most of your cards here are like doubting something. You have the Magician, the Seven of Wands, Mm. The Empress, the Fool card, and whoa, the Sun card. So there's a restart here, a positive restart uh, happening. But I'm trying to figure out for you what's going on and why all of this doubt. Hmm. Perhaps there is a challenge of them getting to you. Yeah, there is a great challenge of them reaching you. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe because of this doubt, there is a great challenge for you to reach them. Possibly. Possibly. I'm trying to figure out what happened here. How, how is this possible? It's probably something you're wondering too. <laughs> so I could be mimicking your energy or perhaps theirs of what's going on here. What happened? Hmm. I think if I look closer at the cards, I might be able to get something. Maybe this is someone who's afraid of being tricked um, and has set some strong boundaries because they don't want to be tricked into something. Or at least that's how they think. That's how they see the situation. And because they've noticed some energy that they may not like, or afraid of, yeah, to put it in the best way. Maybe they're afraid of breaking their hearts. They started getting into doubt full throttle. And what was initially planted, I'm reading this as them taking something out that was just about to create roots. I feel like this person dug in because the hands are dirty, took out this beginning and perhaps wants to plant it somewhere else. But we do see here with the Fool and the Sun card that that's not going to happen. And we see a clear new positive beginning again between the two of you. Yeah, I would say that this person um, is very doubtful. Maybe they've, got their, they've gotten their heart stung before. They don't trust people easily especially that they feel vulnerable for liking you this much. I think there is this initial energy, as I'm reading this now, of running away. Um, running away, being afraid of being tricked, for sure. And they've gotten into this huge uh, situation of being doubtful, of going, ah, should I do this, should I not do this? This doesn't look right. This doesn't feel right. I don't feel in balance. Should I go for it or should I not go for it? So yeah, in this connection, I think what's going on here is that the person you're inquiring about is going through a lot of going back and forth because they're uh, running, afraid to get tricked or afraid to break their hearts. But is there infatuation? There's definitely infatuation. In fact, I see that this running is happening because of the infatuation. And I do see that they've created this bubble where it's not so easy um, for, for you perhaps to contact them, although they do see you think very highly of you. Mm. I feel with the magician that they like to be more uh, in control of their life. Yeah, they don't like things to get out of hand where they lose control. They like to keep control of their lives very well. And for this reason, they're keeping a super protective um, 
environment around them, making sure that they don't get hit easily because their hearts have opened up tremendously. So we do see they don't want to swap. They don't want to swap um, their security for something that is not really clear. Um, yeah, they don't want to be vulnerable to translate this in the best way. They don't want to be vulnerable and they, to being hit, to being disappointed, to being hurt. They're creating the strong bubble around them and they're not taking it. And they're even willing to like take the seed, although they're infatuated by you, but not be vulnerable like that. Wow. I, I was going to ask, so what's going to happen then? Uh, I, I want to see, see, there's a gap. I want to see first what's going to change this situation uh, with this bright new beginning that's happening here. So what's going on here? I bet that's the first thing you're asking. See, the Ace of Pentacles is still an Ace of Pentacles. Even if we did feel like someone has took out, has taken out, sorry, a seed, it is still the Ace of Pentacles. And um, it could mean that it, it, no, no, no. It does mean that there is a new beginning, despite all of the doubt that's going on here. There, there is definitely a new beginning here. So, how is this new beginning happening between the two of you? Let's see this story. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So how is this new beginning happening? Five of Cups. You'll first have to endure seeing them drop it. You have to watch them. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, you will be seeing them first dropping it. And it's due to their fears. It's not due to you doing anything wrong. Uh, you have the Chariot. High Priestess and the Ten of Swords. Mm. As they drop it and feel their sense of security back, what will guide them back is their intuition with the High Priestess. The person you could be inquiring about uh, they, the person you're inquiring about could be highly psychic, whether they realize it or not. And I think now that they are outside of uh, the worries that they have, they've dropped it, they feel safe, then they'll be able to think about it wisely. Because the high priestess is known to have an open mind, which shows me that this is a person who will come back on their own as they feel safe because their intuition and their open-mindedness to think about things from a safe space, not from a worried, imbalanced place, will revive this situation. And uh, you see, usually we see with the Ten of Swords someone laying flat on the ground with ten swords on their back. Here we see someone upright, looking for a bright tomorrow and looking pretty strong and with the yellow here, positive. So yeah, this is perhaps why you will just have to let them, give them their space, that bubble that they're creating and allow them to drop it for a little bit and uh, allow them to uh, find their space, find their safety, find their own comfort. This is These are all issues that they have to deal with it doesn't have to do with you. And they will be coming back. In fact, with the chair, they will be coming rather quickly. But this time, it will be on a very positive uh, note. And with the Empress, I feel like this is a person who is very nurturing by nature, very loving, very caring, very nurturing. And I think this is a way in which they protect their hearts. They don't like to leave it out vulnerable in the open. And this is why perhaps it's their natural process of 
taking the space that they need to think wisely and clearly and feel right about it before they're able to come back up. Okay, in that case, let's take a look at your guidance and then we can even take a look at timing. So guidance, what are you guided to do? Three of cups, like be open to communicate and to connect. Uh, when they come in, like don't play this game with them. Uh, you know, you don't have these issues, it seems. So uh, be open. If like they're connect, fine, connect. If they're not connecting, don't connect. So you have the three of cups, the eight of wands, king of wands, and the nine of swords. Yeah, because keeping things open with the Eight of Wands will create a momentum. In fact, a strong momentum with the King of Wands. So this person is not trying to play games. It does not look like it at all. In fact, this is a person who's afraid. And so keeping the connection open when they're safe will create that strong momentum and strong connection, especially because the infatuation is there. And when the connection is not there, don't take it to heart. Don't stress about it. Do you see? The, the crows are uh, changing into a lighter color. It means change your thoughts to positive ones. Don't give your thoughts, uh, don't give yourself ideas like they don't want to talk to me. Uh, the connection is over. Uh, they're rejecting me. Yeah, change your thoughts. Um, and you know, don't invest in... Uh, emotions until this person is able to show you that they are stable of course and so if you don't invest too much emotions but love them unconditionally you know have uh, um, like consider them a friend in the beginning uh, at least at this stage of your connection whatever type of connection this is and allow them to be safe to come in and communicate because communication, nice communication will build a strong bond. And if they're not there for a while, don't stress about it. Just let them create that safety that they need. If they find their balance and they prove to be a stable person now, then I believe you would want to invest emotions in, in a stable person who has, was able to take their time and figure out why they're afraid and find out for themselves that maybe the things they're afraid of are not really there. Because this could be for just a little bit of time and it's normal in the beginning for people to um, like not know each other Maybe you know each other very well, but something significant changed in the connection and you want to give them their time to process it. So depending on where this is in your connection, if this is a small time frame where someone is like a little bit afraid and they need their time, then absolutely give them that time to figure things out, you know. But if they continue to like come in and go out of the connection in and out forever, then that's ne definitely not a healthy connection. You know how this is resonating with you. The only reason I'm trusting that this is a healthy person afraid for a little bit is because I'm seeing the main card is unconditional love. And I'm also seeing that there is a bright new beginning. This is why I'm speaking in the way of, you know, give them the time to figure things out and find their balance because you don't want to throw people without giving the time to even understand what's going on for yourself. So if this is resonating with you, then give this person their time to figure things out and to find safety within your connection. And you will find that there will be a positive new beginning in this connection and uh, it won't be there for long. In fact, uh, this turbulence won't be there for long. Uh, since we asked about timing, that reminds me. So when, whoa, thanks a lot. And also this one moved. When should you expect things to stabilize with this person? King of Swords. So yes, as a person that's very scared, but this is also a rational person. 
King of Swords is number 14. Knight of Wands. So it's going to happen rather quickly. In terms of time, it's like I noticed, it's not going to be energy that stays there for long. Because if it does, it's not healthy uh, anyways. So, yeah, and this does strike me as a good person who's afraid, who's going to, who loves unconditionally. Maybe did not have a good experience. So how long... Rather quickly with the Knight of Wands. Maybe between the fall and the winter. Or a change of season. I know I know Wands would be summer, but it's giving me all the oranges of the fall. So maybe somewhere between from the fall to the winter. This is, of course... Uh, if you're watching this reading now, it is a timeless reading, so take it how it resonates with the timing. If you're not during the time of fall or winter, then do know that uh, it could be in the next winter in the or the fall, but I highly doubt it because this is quick energy and the whole reading is about waiting a little bit of time, not a long time. So for this reason, I'm kind of feeling it's within this season or change of seasons. And in all cases, it's going to happen rather quickly with the Knight of Wands because the Knight of Wands is the fastest knight in the deck. So it's going to be moving soon pretty uh, quickly. Until then and after that happens, not until then, after that happens, if in fact this new beginning happens, which seems like it's going to happen for a lot of you, if not all of you, this bright, positive new beginning, do know that this is a person who loves unconditionally. Yes, they were infatuated by you and loved all the things that you, you people would initially like about you in the beginning, maybe even saw a lot of things in you, but will continue to love you unconditionally um, for what your soul really is. And this, my dear pile number three, is exactly what I see going on with you and your romantic interest. I truly hope you've enjoyed your reading. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Uh, I do post readings every single, nearly every single day. And it would be lovely to have you as part of the community. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Wishing you the best of luck from my heart. <laughs> May you have a wonderful connection full of unconditional love, and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye!